Since I've owned this truck, my wife has always said that she smells fuel whenever she's around it. I never smelled it, so I thought she was crazy. But as it turns out, she was right. After I cleaned up all the debris that was between the fuel tank and the plastic that was beneath it, a small leak reared its ugly head. Apparently this truck's had a leak for a while, but the debris was catching it and not allowing it to reach the ground. Now, since there's nothing to stop it, it makes a pool of fuel if you leave the truck for a few hours. It's a small leak, but I need to fix it. So, I'm gonna replace the whole tank. That is a new fuel tank for my 89 K1500. I jacked the truck up and put it on jack stands and took off the driver's side wheel in order to get more access to all the connections to the fuel tank. Here I am on the passenger side of the car near the filler neck for the fuel tank. And I'm going to remove this hose clamp and this hose clamp first so that it's free from the filler neck. All right, so the tubes were harder to take off than I anticipated, but they're off now. Next, I'm gonna remove this ground wire that is attached with a bolt that is just in here. And there is a better view of it. This is the bolt holding up the rearmost fuel tank strap. So I'm going to take it off. The front of the fuel tank is held up by this bracket that has studs on it that come through the frame here. I need to remove these four nuts that are attached to the stud that is on that bracket. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to wiggle the tank and just so it's free enough so that I can disconnect the connections up top. So I don't know if this is going to work. This is not how I did it last time and I've never done it this way. But the width of the tire seems to be about the right height such that the fuel tank can sit on it but not be so much that it puts too much tension on the connections up top. So I'm going to push the fuel tank bracket from the front outward and it should drop onto the tire. Maybe it'll give me just enough clearance to disconnect the lines and the electrical connector. All right, now I have room to work and I can disconnect everything. So that's easy. Now I just need some wrenches to disconnect these. So a 19 millimeter for the larger nut, and I believe I have a 16 millimeter for the smaller one. There are two identical connections, one for the fuel return, and one that is the outlet of the fuel pump. There is also another small tube that is held on with a hose clamp. You just get some needle nose pliers and you can take that off pretty easily. All right, so now 
there is nothing connecting the fuel tank to the truck. It was tough to get a good camera angle while I was working on it, but this is a better view of what I disconnected. This is the old tank and the new tank side by side. And I would feel really bad putting this old rusted fuel pump back into this. So I'm just gonna bite the bullet and get a new one. I went to O'Reilly's and picked up a new fuel pump hanger assembly that comes with the fuel pump. And it came with instructions and the only thing that I need to do to make it ready for installation is put the floater arm on. And I think that's it. I get asked all the time, how do you know how to put stuff back together? Well, I don't always know, but there's always clues. So this is the new fuel pump hanger assembly with the fuel pump included. One of these is the outlet of the fuel pump and one of these is the return to the fuel tank. With this pump, it's easy to see if you just follow the line. So this one goes to the fuel pump. So that is the outlet of the fuel pump. On the truck, I'll connect this to the line that has a fuel filter connected to it. And this one, if you follow it, it just goes back to a dump tube. So the fuel is returned on that line. And the other lines are obvious. This is the, the vent tube for the tank. And this goes to that, the rubber hose that was held on with a clamp. And obviously this is the connection to power the fuel pump. And that's all there is to it. You install it in the same orientation as the old one and then put the tank back on. So installing the new pump onto the new tank should be pretty straightforward. So this one comes with a new O-ring. So let's see. I'm pretty sure it goes in like There is a groove for the O-ring to sit, right here. And there's slots for these and tabs that the, the other part goes under. So, I think, all I have to do is press down and rotate this lock ring and I'm golden. Yeah, I'm gonna knock this in at least another inch. All right, I'll call that good. So in the morning, I'll put this in the truck. All right, time to get back at it. Now, I'm gonna swap all the tubing from the old tank to the new tank. Now, it's time to swap over the plastic that goes underneath the tank and the bracket and strap for the front. This is the nut I have to remove to free the strap that holds the bracket to the fuel tank.
it looks like the fuel was leaking somewhere near here, or at least that's where it ended up. So I'm gonna see if I can find where the hole was. I don't know exactly where it was coming from, but frankly, on this side anyway, it is in pretty bad shape. Um, yeah, I mean, you have quite a few areas of significant rust. But, not to worry, the new one has no rust. This is always fun because these straps are pretty strong. I want to say I had an easier time getting this in when it was brand new. So I checked out the old tank. As it turns out, this area here is bent. So I'm gonna bend it on this one. So I got the nut started. Let me show you how I got it in. So this mating surface here at the top and bottom half of the, the fuel tank was sticking straight out horizontally. And that didn't allow the strap to make that turn to get to the hole. So I hammered it so that it was vertical in this section. And then I used a pry bar to help push the threaded portion into the hole. Now I got the nut started and I can tighten it down. All right, that's good enough for now. If I need to tighten it more, I can do it once it's mounted back to the truck. So now I have to reposition the tank under the bed and get the studs through the frame such that it'll hold it up so that I could attach the rearmost strap. The tank is empty this time, so it should be easier. Let's see. This task always seems easy before I start doing it. There's nothing difficult about it, it's just cumbersome. I ended up using a jack on the front and the rear of the fuel tank to hold it in position so that I could reconnect everything. Now I'm just gonna wiggle the fuel tank into place, tighten the studs, and one of the studs for the front strap bracket came out. So I'm gonna put that back in, tighten everything down, and hopefully fill it up with some fuel. Now for the rearmost strap, see if I can get it to mate back up. Last time I had to use a jack. Let's see if I got enough muscle this time. And I do not have enough muscle this time. All right. I think that's good. Now I just have to reconnect the hoses and such that are attached to the filler neck. And with that, it's done. So now I need to put some fuel in the tank, put the passenger side wheel back on, and then fill her up and make sure that she doesn't leak. So there's still some fuel in the tank. So before I dispose of it, 
I'd like to get it out and put it in the new tank. I have some tubing lying around from a from a pump. It won't fit over it won't fit over this. So I'm going to cut it, fit the tube over it and figure out where I need to apply 12 volts for it to pump. get ready so that when I do figure out what makes it pump it doesn't squirt all over the place right. so I'm gonna assume the ground goes to negative ah so it is this this right one. And it's working. I'm gonna let it go until it is empty. Well, that's good enough. I'm gonna stop it so that I can put the truck together and make sure the new one works. So let's see uh, if everything works. Hope the battery has enough juice. I think I heard it prime. Let's see. Put the rest of the gas in I think we're good I had already put a few gallons in but this is the remainder of what was in the tank What happens? Hey, baby. Love you. Love you too. All right, this is my first fill up with the fresh tank. I'm gonna let it go till it stops. I have not done that in a long time because of the leak. And if the, the fuel level sender doesn't work, I'm gonna leave it in for two months because I'm not pulling the tank again. So we'll see. So you're gonna see it with me. Please work, please work. Oh, so thankful. All right, good news, everything's working. Now that that's done, I'm gonna move on to some things with the Civic and the Golf. If you'd like to keep up with everything I do on the K1500, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care.